Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the Lumetri effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I'm going to just going to be teaching you the basics of it because it is a pretty advanced effect and it has some nuances in it that are a little bit complicated. But the basics are still extremely powerful, so we're just going to focus on that. So to get the Lumetri effect added, you're going to want to go to Effects and then into Video Effects down to Color Correction and then right on over into Lumetri Color right here. It's got the three little boxes over there. Just click it and drag it onto your film and you'll see it appear up here in the Effects Controls which is just, um, if you don't see it, maybe you have Source open, just click over here on Effect Controls and make sure you're clicked on the footage. So once it's open, you're going to see the basic effects up here that's always in there. You can go ahead and bring this arrow up for audio effects and we don't need the, any of those others. So just have Lumetri open right here. So Lumetri is composed of six really areas that you can work in and some of the areas, um, they're not all like exclusive of, of one another. Some of the areas affect different areas. So like curves is a different um, way to change colors or to change brightness and contrast while well, basic correction has those exact same things but in sort of a dial format so first off we're just gonna get one of them out of the way really quickly vignette is just to add a vignette to it and what a vignette is is that sort of darkness around the edges really cool and really bright shots to focus you towards the center I use them a lot if you want to go the opposite way it'll make it white right here kind of makes it into a dream sequence but we can just go ahead and put that back the midpoint is going to show you so if we turn this all the way up here the midpoint and then bring the feather down the midpoint you'll see it um kind of brings it in or out and then if you bring the feather up yeah so that's what really that does and roundness is all it's doing is making it more of a circle instead of an ellipse or a square sort of which is kind of cool if you want to add a little bit of feather to that and a little bit more like i don't know make that black yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool, makes it almost like postcardy. Anyway, that's the vignette, um, really simple one. Uh, I like to use it for the circular. I'll bring that back to zero, and I'm probably gonna keep a little vignette on there. Definitely not that much. Yeah, maybe just a little vignette on the edges just because it's a very bright image, and I do want kind of the focus to be the center here instead of the really bright or the kind of just bush down there. So then we have basic correction, and this is all the stuff to correct your footage. Um, there's color grading and color correction. Correction is trying to get it back to a happy medium, um, maybe what it looked like in real life, or trying to make it look like another piece of your footage so they all look like they're shot on the same day or something. Grading is when you add an effect to make it look like The Matrix or Taken or other movies like that. So in color correction, we just have stuff in here to correct it back to an original of something so for example temperature you go right it's going to be warm you go left it's going to be blue and that is your white balance best way to look at this is to look at your whites and see what color they are my whites look a little bit of orange so we're going to add a little bit of blue to it really small but kind of brings the what it looked like in the day back to it so and as you can see these are under the white balance column right here you can also input a lookup tree um, right here where when you click on it, it's going to kind of put, it's going to apply an effect using all of this, but it's not going to actually show it. And it's lookup table, my bad. Um, lookup tables are basically, they take in one color and it looks it up in the table and replaces it with another color. So they're really cool, um, very, very sort of artistic way of correcting things. I'm not going to use one right now. Um, you can browse, you can import your own, you can look through these right here and just kind of mess around with it, have some fun with it. Tint is the um, exact same thing with white balance, but instead of blue or orange, it is the green and magenta, so kind of the other side of the color wheel here. Um, maybe it has a tiny bit of magenta in it, so let, I don't know, let's say minus 0.5 here. It's very small, almost non-noticeable, but I don't think there's that much needed there. So then you get down into the tone, and this is um, very light-based, so you're controlling the light of the scene. So exposure is the entire light. The contrast is how far away the light and the dark are from one another. Highlights are just the really highest. Shadows are the lowest. Whites are the white parts of the scene and blacks are the black parts of the scene. Just different ways to control the light in the scene. So this one, since we have the sky in it, we're going to duck those highlights down a little bit to bring some more detail in there. The shadows up a little bit too much there. We're losing some of the shadows, but we can actually bump the shadows up just a little bit. Bring back sort of the mid part of that image. Oops, right there. Um, 
whites are a little shiny back there, so let's bring those down just a little bit. It looks like we're, yeah, we're, we're covering some of that mountain there. Blacks up a little bit, and let's pump that contrast a little bit too. <laughs> That's if you go really high. I wanted to see it. Doesn't look like it was changing that much. Like sometimes I like to go the extreme and then back it off instead of going from nothing and then trying to add it. Um, just a different way of doing it. Yeah, kind of like right about there. So now we're looking at this between the two. It goes from a little bit of a looks like it was shot on your phone to a little bit more cinematic, and that's not even into grading yet. So now we have basic correction down. The next one is creative, which gets into your grading. Um, if you want to stay in the same realm of correction, though, the other one here is curves, and this is a really basic, this one is a combination of correction and grading. The curves can be used for both, but a lot of times they're used for just corrections. Um, however, if you do something like bringing the blue down there, and then maybe bringing the opposite reds up a little bit, you can kind of tint your film a certain way. Now if we do the opposite and we actually bring the reds low the highlights down and bring the blues up a little bit we get a kind of a cool grade here um, so basically what we did was we just pumped up the highlights to go a little bit red um, and then we pumped up the low sort of end of the spectrum to go a little bit blue and it adds a cool contrast and so colors can clash and they can also look really good together so some colors work well and some colors work well when they're really like really dialed in so really oranges and blues while some others look really good when you just kind of have just a little bit of contrast in there so i actually like this style right here i think that actually came out pretty cool gave it a neat color a neat tint to it um the other thing you can do right here is the hue and saturation wheel curve sort of thing and basically what this is is the center is gray and then the outside is the most defined of that color so if i wanted to target a certain color i can use this curve say i don't like yellows in this one and I can kind of drag all the yellows down. And as you see, the back didn't change, but since there's a little bit of yellow in this green right here, it went ahead and it killed all that yellow and made it gray. Kind of um, a very cool new addition to this software uh, that I really like to play around with a little bit. So if we want to actually pump up the greens a little bit, we can kind of, instead of we can enunciate that a little bit down there. A little change it. Yeah, we'll just stick with that. Um, yeah, this is a really fun tool to use to target certain colors and really accentuate certain colors. So then getting back up into creative. Now this is just straight into color wheels. And you also see that there is a, um, oops, where is it? You also see that there are different things for colors like vibrant, sharpen, um, saturation. Sharpen is actually more of a contrast. It sort of defines the edges. So if I go left, you're kind of get gonna have more defined edges on here. Now the problem with sharpen is if you go too high, especially with things like trees where there's a lot of leaves that have edges, you're gonna get this really weird over sharpened image and it's gonna make it look unrealistic completely. <clears throat> However, I like to add just a little bit of sharpness because my camera, I told it not to add sharpness to it, so I kind of like to add a little bit back. Then you have a little bit of vibrance. That's going to be how really bright your colors are, how colorful they are. And then saturation is how much color there is. So we're going to pump up a little bit. Vibrance is a little too high. Yeah, we're actually going to lower the vibrance, maybe the saturation a little bit too. Um, if you raise it too much, you'll start to see it looks cartoony, but in a bad way, where it looks um, all the colors are overpunched, and sometimes you'll even start developing colors that weren't there in the first place. So yeah, these are all just sort of moving things back and forth. In Creative, you also have a bunch of presets here. Click on one, and it's going to apply that preset to it. You can control the intensity right here. A lot of cool stuff in here, and you could browse and find your own from online or any other sources like that. Whoops. We are just going to go back to none, though. And then, so now you have your color wheels down here. Color wheels are the color of the different parts of the footage. So I could do the same sort of thing I did in curves where I could bring the shadows, which are going to be all the dark areas, anything that's sort of not in the middle, kind of getting towards the dark end of things. So maybe this tree, that side of the building, down here a little bit. I can tint that a certain way, and the highlights are the opposite of that, the really light stuff. So up here, the shine on all of these, the whites on all the buildings. So like if I want it green for highlights and magenta for lowlights, 
then I get another really interesting sort of dynamic here, um, especially with my other correction in there. But again, I kind of like that feel to it, and so we're going to stick with it. Be just because I like the way the magenta kind of goes off the green on the bottom, and then you still have like the really cool mountaintop in the background. So yeah, we're just going to stick with that for now. And so that basically sums up creative. Um, then you have color wheels, which is just specifically that bottom part of creative, but now it has a lot more control in the color wheels. And by a lot more, I mean you have control over the midtones now. Um, midtones are really important because they drive the entire image in one direction. So we pulled these up to yellow here. The entire thing goes to yellow. The in See the entire tint goes to a light blue down there. We're just going to kind of keep this one center. But yeah, so you can actually adjust all three of them. And if you ever buy like a color correction board that you can plug in your computer, usually they'll have three balls on it. And each one is so you can kind of rotate the shadows, midtones, and highlights in different directions at the same time to sort of dial something in really, really slowly. And then we have HSL secondary. And this is the part I'm not really going to talk about in this video just because um, it's a little bit complicated to explain at first. Basically what you're doing is you're selecting a color in here and you're changing that color or modifying that color. Um, that is what secondary means. Um, instead of a primary color correction slash color grading, you're doing a secondary one, which is not targeting the entire footage as one entity. It is targeting a certain color. So you could change, for example, um, you think that I don't know, this green, you don't really like this color of green. You could try to change it a little bit, maybe make it a little duller or a little brighter. Maybe you could even, um, if you do it right and you put a lot of effort into it, you could actually change all of this green um, and have it kind of reflect fall, make it look a little you know, yellower, a little oranger, which would affect these as well and would even affect the entire landscape back there. So you can do some really fun, creative things with it. However, I'm going to make a separate video on that just because it's a little bit out of the scope of this video. And that basically does it, um, except for there's a new feature in Lumetri Color now that is a mask. Um, so basically what you can do is you can create a, a mask like you could in After Effects. It's still a little bit janky is the best word I could come up with. Um, it's a little slow. It's not as fast as After Effects, mainly because it's trying to apply at the exact same time. And you can't grab the edges like you could in After Effects. It tries to move the whole thing. When all I want to do is, you know, and then when you try to do that, it, it creates a point when I just want to move the line down. But yeah, so you could create a little box here. And let's see. And let's, um, so if we go into like, I don't know, maybe if we go, let's really bump up this, this contrast right here. Have like a strip of really high contrast. Then we go back in the mask. We can feather that out. And now... I actually really kind of like that. It, it, it almost is like the vignette, except now instead of you know darkening all the edges, we're really focusing an area on the center here. So if we just go Lumetri Color, turn that off. So that's normal. Then you kind of just, it's very artistic, and it's, it's a really cool thing. Now, this is only for the still image. You kind of have to play it through and see how it works going through it. But yeah, I think that actually looks kind of cool overall as it plays through. This was a shot where I was just trying to do a reveal of it. So yeah, maybe. Uh, masks give you a really lot of, a lot of creativity. You can build certain areas. You can accentuate certain areas. So, you know, you want the top left to be a certain color while the bottom right goes to a certain color. So you can have um, a lot of fun with it. It's kind of a combination of both Photoshop and After Effects in that sense. Um, after Effects can do both, but Photoshop kind of has that where you can do the accentu accentuating each sort of part. And so, yeah, I think it's a really cool addition, and it's a cool tie-over from After Effects' abilities into Premiere Pro. That about does it for Lumetri Color. Um, remember that color correction and color grading is an artistic thing, so it isn't something you can just slap on and say you're done. You actually have to spend some time. You have to throw away your, you know, your first, second, and third tries and keep trying it over and over again to get better and better at it. So it might take you some time to get something that you really love and to get something that works for the piece. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Um, remember to subscribe for more videos like this on Adobe-related stuff. And until next time, guys, see ya.